Hello everybody, Trevor here, and I hope you've had a wonderful Easter this month. Because I have. I ate my chocolate bunny, I watched my church sermon on YouTube at the time, but unfortunately, I didn't color any eggs because my mom and I didn't feel like doing it this year. But enough about that, I'm here to talk about my top 5 favorite Thomas Toy brands of all time. So, let's begin, shall we? Coming at number 5 is Bachman. I actually consider this brand much better than what Lionel does with their Thomas trains because the problem with Lionel is that they only made 6 engines, which are Thomas, Percy, James, Diesel, and of course, Airy and Burt. But with Bachman, they at least bothered to make more than just those guys. They also produced Rosie, Paxton, Emily, Spencer, and of course, Duck and Oliver. Another thing I love about Bachman is that they at least tried to put more effort and details into the models and sets. For example, they managed to get Emily's model right, which is leagues better than her Hornby model. But the reason why that this is so low on the list is because they're very expensive. Not as expensive as Lionel, but still. And as a result of that, I'm not going to get all of them, just some. Coming at number 4 are the Minis. I actually like these little guys because they look cool and cute at the same time. Sure, they're gimmicky, but they're still fun to play with. For instance, they give each model a different theme besides their normal forms, like winter, graffiti, spooky, animal, back to school, and even holiday. But my most favorite themes of all have to be the crossovers, such as DC Super Friends and Spongebob. I might make a video about my ideas for different crossover themes in the near future, but right now, I want to get this done and over with. In addition, I like the fact that they introduce new models every year, except for this year unfortunately. I mean, I was expecting to see Ryan, Rajiv, or any of the Journey Beyond Sora characters for this range, but no, they had to make the classic 75th themed engines instead. But the biggest problem I have with the new minis this year has to be the cheap cargo cars with blind boxes instead of blind bags. And I have to agree with Trains Are Fun that they're a really bad deal. Thankfully, they still make the blind bags, but I think they're only in certain regions of the globe. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Number 3 are Tommy and Trackmaster. When I was a little boy, my dad bought me this particular Thomas set because he loved me so much, and that I always wanted an electric Thomas train set. It was my very first Thomas set in the Tomika World range. I loved it so much that I decided to collect more years later. Thomas was my first engine, while my second two were Stepney and Diesel 10 for motor road and rail. It became my third most important Thomas toy in my collection. Now the funny thing with Tommy Thomas is, is that it has a lot of names. First it was called Tomika World from 1997 to 2002. Then it was renamed Motor Road and Rail in 2003, but it's still called Play Rail in Japan. When I first saw the Play Rail name, I thought it was pronounced Plow Rail, but it's actually called Play Rail, but without the Y in Play. Sadly, in 2007, the Motor Road and Rail range was discontinued in the US and UK due to licensing issues. Thankfully, Hit Entertainment bought the license and renamed it Trackmaster. I honestly didn't mind this change because at least it's still compatible with the old Tommy Thomas range, but with different track and road pieces. In fact, some of the old Trackmaster models looked better than their respective Playrail counterparts. For example, the 2013 Steven by Fisher Price looks a lot better than the Japanese exclusive version because it has a consistently sized tender and boiler. The Playrail one, on the other hand, is too small and it has a motorized tender that looks too big for Steven. But that's just me, though. Here are a couple more examples. I think the Trimaster versions of Connor and Caitlin look much better than their Playrail counterparts because the faces on the Playrail versions look too big. But up until 2014, when the Trimaster range was redesigned, that is when things started to go downhill. Not only that they redesigned the track, but they also made the engines look too chunky and unrealistic. And worst of all, it's not entirely compatible with the previous Trapmaster range. For instance, the steep inclines only work for the redesigned engines because the new ones are made to go faster. So therefore, 
you can't use old engines for these types of sets. If you watch YouTube videos about it, you'll see what I mean. If I could think of a couple positive things about Trimaster Revolution, it would be that the engines are faster and quieter than the old ones, but that doesn't excuse their chunky redesigns. One of the worst examples is Edward. They gave him the wrong kind of side rods. He's supposed to have smaller ones like in the original Tomy version. Heck, even the newer CGI player row version did the same mistake too. <sighs> That's just weird. Recently, I've heard that the Trapmaster name is being retired this year and will be rebranded as Motorized. Not to say that's a bad thing, but the biggest problem I have with the Motorized name is that it sounds way too generic. The great thing about the Trapmaster name is that it has a nicer ring to it. I mean, it sounds creative, and it makes the consumer like me want to be creative with my train sets. Of course, I'm not the targeted demographic, but you get my point. Motorized, on the other hand, sounds way too generic. Why not call it the new motorized range Trackmaster Legacy? That way, you can keep the Trackmaster name, but still keep the updated engines and rolling stock. Speaking of engines and rolling stock, one thing I like about Trackmaster Legacy so far has to be the redesigns of Annie and Clarabo, because they look lengthier than their previous counterparts. Oh, and I also like the additional detailing on the engine, such as Thomas himself. Number 2. Wooden Railway I've talked about this before in my previous videos, but I'll try to keep it brief here. Thomas Wooden Railway is my second favorite and second most important Thomas toy in my collection. If you remember back in my first Thomas Wood Rand video, you would know that my first Wooden Railway item was Call D of 1996. My second two were Diesel 261 and the original Toad of 1998. The reason why this is number two because it reminds me of those Brio trains that my sister and I used to play with at one of our uncle's houses in California. I loved how the magnets worked, I loved how the wooden tracks are designed, and I love the fact that the engines and rolling stock are mostly made of wood. Fun fact, Brio also made their own Thomas Wind Railway system known as Brio Thomas, which is also good, but it's not as popular as Learning Curve's range. So you can kind of see why it was discontinued in 2000 and got beat out by Thomas Wooden Railway. But what's most interesting about Wooden Railway is that it only lasted from 1992 to early 2017, which makes it the most long-running merchandise line for the Thomas franchise, even longer than Ertl. And those are the reasons why I love Thomas Wooden Railway so much. I miss Wooden Railway so much. Why did it need to end? Why? Okay, enough about that. Let's move on to the honorable mentions. Brio. Like I said before, it got beat out by Wooden Railway in the year 2000, and it's not as important as the other Wooden Railway line by Learning Curve. Take along and take and play. If you recall in one of my videos where I defended Push Along, I said that they are okay, but not as good as Ertl. Adventures It only lasted for about a year and got replaced by Push Along, so that's why I didn't add it to the list. Lionel It got beat out by Bachman because they're way too expensive. And I already explained the problems with that company, so go back and check that out. And the number one most favorite Thomas Toy brand of all time is... Ertl! You guys knew this was coming, didn't you? Well, when I was a toddler, I played with these die-cast trains, and I had so much fun playing with them. They were some of the best die-cast toys I've ever played with in my Thomas collection. But that does not mean that they are perfect. For example, the hook and eye couplings break every now and then, which ticks me off. Thankfully, Ertl managed to fix this problem in 2002 by changing the couplings to hook and loop so that they'll last longer. But unfortunately, they're only exclusive to the UK. And like I said before, good thing there's eBay. Another thing that Ertl could have worked on before going out of business was to make the tenders detachable so that they can make tighter turns on the tracks. At least with most merchandise lines like Take Along, companies manage to make the tenders detachable so that they can turn easily. Also, there are a few models that are 
not the best. A perfect example is Bluebell, which is just a carbon copy of Thomas's model. I think the prototype version would have looked a lot better despite the additional delicate engineer in the cab. Another perfect example is Diesel 10's model, which is just a similar copy of D199, and his claw doesn't even move at all. How could Ertl mess this up? At least the Bandai version managed to make his claw articulate. Overall, despite the flaws Ertl has, I still think it is the best diecast Thomas toy in the world, because it has the most details on the outside, and I do mean more detailed than Take Along and Take and Play. For instance, look closely at this model of Coldy. It has the correct side rods, the right new round dome, and all of those other details that you can see on the outside. Another reason why Ertl's number one because it has more realism than its successors. Examples include Henry's log car, Scrap Trevor, the Silly Trucks, Catherine, and of course the old coaches, which only appeared in season one of the show. So, you guys should be thankful that they didn't make the model so gimmicky like what Hit Entertainment did to take along and take and play. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Should Ertl come back? Well, the answer I'm going to give out is a resounding no. I don't think Ertl should return because I think it ended on a really good note. Not a perfect note, but a very good one indeed. Remember, no matter how good, bad, or mediocre these Thomas toys are, they are never perfect, and each one of them has their ups and downs. But sadly, the Thomas merchandise line has been going downhill a lot lately, like with Thomas Wood, Trapmaster 2, and the early discontinuation of adventures. I think there's something going horribly wrong in Mattel. I'll still watch the show, don't worry but I'm really worried about their toy sales. I'm not saying that they should go out of business, I just think they need a better strategy for their marketing. If I were an employer at Mattel, I want to not only respect the new generation of kids, but also the old generation as well. That way, I can appeal to both kids and adults. And those are some of the reasons why I think kids deserve better quality Thomas toys than what they've already got. Now tell me in the comment section below about which Thomas toy is your favorite. Do you like the old Thomas toys like I do, or the new ones better? Because I'm perfectly fine with either opinion. Anyways, this is Trevor Davis, signing off.